Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets Who Quants. Welcome to, well, it's our winning team for WashU Olin Business School's Big Idea Bounce. And uh, I got, just got to hand it to you three. Uh, the name of the company is Petal Cell. We have Adam, David, and Vishal. And they knocked it out of the park. The presentation skills were remarkable, smooth, articulate, thoughtful. Uh, their follow-on answers to our questions, some of them quite demanding, uh, were just fantastic. So congratulations. $50,000. Um, I hope you spend it well. Big parties. <laughs> <laughs> Big hey, that, that happened in the dot-com days. It didn't go so well. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, here's what I want to know. How did you come up with the idea? That, that's a great question. Um, really, it started uh, freshman year of college, went to University of Michigan, um, and really what we wanted to do, we were all like casual like leisure bikers, and we wanted to find a way to get more people onto bikes. It's actually a better thing for the environment. Um, it decongests cities. Uh, and we thought, okay, what was a problem that people are, that's preventing people from getting onto a bike? A lot of it was safety, connectivity, um, and like the whole idea of someone having a better experience while they're riding. Um, and we realized creating a power source so people could power their essential safety and connected devices while they ride was really a, taking that barrier away could ultimately get more butts onto bikes and out of cars. Now here's a, a thing that I always wonder about. You went to the Ross School as an undergraduate. Yes. Uh, your partners did not go to business school, am I right? Okay. How did the three of you get together? How did you find each other? How did you know that, in fact, you could work together as a team? Yeah, um, that's actually sort of serendipitous in a way. Um, I met Adam first through a friend of a friend who said, hey, I have a friend who's at Michigan. He's super into entrepreneurship. You have to connect with him. I think he can add a lot of value. And funny enough, our company name was something different. Our first meeting with Adam, um, I don't remember if it was in person or over Zoom, he brought a whole folder and said, you need to change your name to Pedal Cell, and here's <laughs> why. So I think it was sort of meant to be after that. And then David and I were really good friends at Northwestern, both engineers, spent a lot of time together, um, and it just naturally made, made sense for us to work together, team up with Adam, and uh, here we are today. So a little bit of luck and a little bit of serendipity, but uh, I guess it kind of all worked out. And I'd just like to add, yeah. so I'm actually a year older than these guys in school, so when I met Vishal initially, he was actually a senior in high school. And wow. so I remember distinctly first conversation, he's like, yeah, you know, we're working on some stuff. I'm like, oh, show me. And he panned the camera. He's in his garage blowing up batteries. So, you know, that was a fun, that was a fun first experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, David, your background is engineering? It's mechanical engineering. But you're yes. the marketing guy. It, how, how can an engineer do marketing? <laughs> that is a really good question. So it's definitely been nice, you know, if we need a little bit of tweaking work. And I, I can do some of the mechanical work. But for production runs at this scale, we definitely wanted to have another team member that you know, can make sure we didn't screw up. Basically having an adult in the, an adult in the room. Yeah. And also, once we got the initial product done, a lot of what a company becomes is just about growing it and making sure it gets out and gets exposed. And I'd always been interested in entrepreneurship. My dream since I was a kid was to, I would have probably said an inventor back then before I had really thought of the word entrepreneurship, but to make something and, and run with it. And so I'd worked with a couple different like small businesses. I had like a little tutoring business, and you know, I was good at math, so I taught calculus when I was 15, 16, and I put some online ads, oh, wow. and, you know, so I'd exper I had a good bit of experience with you know, Google AdWords and some of these different platforms. Okay, it's clear. You're the poet and the quant. <laughs> okay, I know Vishal's the quant, and I know you're the poet, too. Okay, but Very you're well definitely said. the poet and the quant, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What role, if any, did business school have in uh, incubating the idea? Hmm. Uh, so I, I, I think it's important to mention how both schools even though engineering Vishal, yeah, and business. Yeah, but not, not just both school, but just like Northwestern and yeah. Michigan played a huge part in our development. Uh, so the University of Michigan's Ross School of Business, they have the Zaluri Institute uh, there, which we pretty much did all their programs. We actually won the Michigan Business Challenge Impact Track when we were in our undergrad. But that was super cool. And they, and they just really allowed us to help uh, the business side of things. And then Northwestern's end, they have this great program called the Garage which is kind of an on-campus incubator for new ideas. And we did that accelerator one summer. And they provided uh, all those resources really for building out like the product side of the business. Um, and you know, we were based in Chicago, actually, for a few years for our headquarters. And the Northwestern Hub really provided those resources for us. That's great. It sounds like you've had a hell of a lot of support all along the way Definitely. from a lot of different people. Definitely. Absolutely. We yeah. couldn't be where we are without it, like, yeah. for sure. 
I mean, even your packaging, I gotta say, okay, here it is. It's uh, really looking good. Steve Jobs would be proud of this packaging, <laughs> I gotta tell you, okay? I mean, it's really simple, simple instructions on one little cardboard yeah. insert, uh, beautifully packaged. The box is fantastic. I love all of this stuff here, powered by you. It's just, it's just really well done. And the plastic on the inside is actually recycled plastic, too. So How pretty, about that? Yeah. Yeah. How about Environment, that? Environment, important. Yeah, we actually, um, this is technically the first world reveal of this packaging. Uh, we, 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 we just did a revamp of it. So this is, a, this is the first official, I guess, uh, reveal showing it publicly. We're really proud of it. <laughs> so your three unique individuals who got together to launch this company, I wonder, uh, do you have disagreements ever on any of the aspects of uh, mm. the development of the product, the marketing of the product, the manufacturing of the product? Uh, have you had a significant disagreement so far? We always get along. No arguments ever. Oh, no, 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 oh, yeah. no, 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 come on. Okay, good. No, no, no. I mean, definitely there are disagreements in, in, when, whenever you're developing a product. And I think that just due to the nature of how we all have distinctive backgrounds. You know, we each have something to add whenever we're tackling a new problem or making a decision. And while that could sometimes, you know, you call them arguments, but we just like to say, everyone on our team, we, whenever we disagree with something, I think one great thing about everyone is that we come to the table not with, trying to not be emotional about it. You, know, you, you want to come with the, with the facts and bring, and bring your side of the problem to light. And it's been extremely constructive. I mean, even last night before this competition here, we were taking a run around uh, the campus and we were talking about uh, our pricing. You know, and it was a very constructive conversation that we had. I don't know if any of you guys want to add to that at all. Yeah, I mean, I think kind of by accident, all of our overlap is so small that we sort of respect each other's domains. <clears throat> um, we bring the facts to the table. Um, again, we're all quants and poets, and so you try to take both approach. Um, and I think like at this point, five years into this, we have sort of that trust in each other that, okay, you know what, maybe David's point is correct. Um, he seems to know what he's talking about. He's proven it time and time again. Um, but you know, that seems like, like, like the right solution or, or vice versa, so. I'll add that I think two <clears throat> things have been helpful. One is we're a co-founding team, but we all kind of crystallize what our domains are. So if mm -hmm. there's a marketing decision, I can make a final decision on that, even right. if there's still disagreement. Um, and same with Adam, sort of more general business decisions, and same with Vishal for, for tech. And so that's been nice to have that clear, I'm res you know, the buck ends with me, I'm responsible for this. And I think also just trusting that we're here to get it right, not to be right, and just trying to lean into that. I remember one of our early meetings saying, like, we had a little bit of friction and just saying, this can be an opportunity to think about how we want to do these meetings. How do we want to discuss things? How do we, let's, let's not let this happen by accident. Let's think about how we get the best out of ourselves. And as an early company, we are a huge part of what the company is. Mm. And so figuring out how to get the very best out of ourselves, I think was a really important part of it. took some time. Yeah. If you had to identify one challenge that you had to overcome, what would that challenge have been? I can, I can name you a lot. Um, I'm sure. I, I, think, I think I can talk about the production challenges we've had. Yeah. Um, I mean, with supply chain, especially now during COVID, being so difficult, producing product, especially at scale, which none of us have done before, is very, very hard. Getting parts to build product is very, very hard. Um, and we realized quickly that if you want to make product, you need a lot of cash up front to build product and you don't see that revenue for months at a time. Mm. And so balancing how much inventory do you have, how much are you putting into inventory, all these sort of things that you learn in business school that at Adam, I'm sure he learned in his classes, but um, you don't actually see that whole cash flow dynamic play out until you're actually doing it. I'm like, oh crap, well we can't do marketing if we put all this money into inventory and that balance of, of managing cash flow. So that was pretty cool to see sort of a real life business class topic being, being played out. But that was definitely, and still is, is a huge challenge. We've gotten better about it, and we're about a year into selling, so we've learned some lessons, but I think that will always remain a challenge for us. And it's, I want to add, it's not just a business challenge. It's like this, it's this beautiful dynamic between the business and engineering, because when you talk about such a complex mm. problem like supply chain these days, it's not as a simple problem saying, oh, are we just going to source these parts? We had some parts that went up in cost by 20x <laughs> during the thing. Not fun. Wow. Um, and so what we needed to do is you go to someone with electronics expertise like Vishal and be like, listen, we need to find an alternative to this integrated circuit because we can't afford it. And it's, ta and it's, and it's tackling those decisions. And you could only do that with a team that fundamentally has both those understandings. Um, and that's why like a lot of the time too, the good thing is like, you know, I, I've had business 
like formal business uh, like uh, education. Vishal's had formal engineering education, for example, and David engineering. But at this point, we're so into in the business. A lot of times, we end up knowing what the other one's going to ask before we even <laughs> yeah. ask it. A lot, like I remember distinctly even talking to Vishal. I got him on the phone and we're like, "Listen," he's like, "Don't worry, I've already swapped these ICs." <laughs> like, like you know, we're, we're on the same page with a lot of these things, and that's just you know something you can only get with time and and, and being lucky with a good fit. Yeah, and I I can say. You guys are a good fit. You get so lucky to have found each other and to make this happen. It's evident to me. Mm. I mean, you're a real solid team. Yeah, really thank amazing. You. Thank you. Okay, so you got Appreciate 50 grand. That. What are you going to do with it? Uh, so, after cool. the party. Um, <laughs> well, David will say marketing, Adam will say business, I'll say engineering. There you and go. Then, no, uh, we're going to have a over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I like that. Why don't we go down the line in terms of engineering. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Starting with me for marketing? Yeah. Uh, a couple really easy applications. The first is just how do we take this money and think about getting a return on it? And the, the lowest hanging fruit for us is there's some magazine interest placements that would just work. They work great for us. They're one of our best channels. Mm. And if we buy those in 12-month placements, we get a 20% ad discount. So essentially a 20% decrease in our acquisition cost. Oh. So putting 10, 12 grand down to pay for the year for all those magazines is going to get just a good financial return for us, which isn't you know, it's not a 10x return, but it is a, it's a good return on that money and just will help with some of other cash flow issues. Yeah, on the, on the business side, one of the largest things we found, since so much of our market's overseas, the majority of our orders are overseas now, what we found is our banded checkout rate for overseas orders is double that of domestic ones because there's very high shipping cost. Um, you have to deal with duties and taxes. Uh, and it just takes a while. It could take up to a month sometimes to receive our product overseas. And so what we're going to be investing this capital into as well is working with an overseas warehouse partner and getting our own tax registration overseas, which is, has an upfront investment involved with it. Um, but for a business like ours that is so uh, internationally focused, it, we, we have to force ourselves to do that because it's such a large part of our business and what we do. Yeah, and to cap it off, <clears throat> um, I think there's a lot of sort of ideas going around about what does, we have this product for this, for this niche market, how do we get that bigger customer base? We talked about regeneration on eBuy, we talked about a lot of different ideas. Now I think is a really good time to start to materialize some of these ideas on, on prototypes and say what's gonna work for us, what's not gonna work for us, and work with these guys to figure out how much of a market does this product open up for us, a different version of that, and then figuring out what's the next, what's the next step forward to take that next leap in our business. I think this money will be, um, exponentially beneficial to us because now we can kind of go from where we are a little stagnated and figuring out production, figuring out marketing, take that next leap to say, okay, what does it look like to really scale as a non-venture funded business, which, mm. is, which is really cool. That's great. I just have to ask this last question. How old are you? <laughs> All three of you. I'm 25, 24, and 23. Man, you guys got a lot of roadway. Yeah. Which is an appropriate <laughs> metaphor for your business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Panel Cell, uh, congratulations. Vishal, Adam, David, well done. Thank you. The winners of the <laughs> WashU Olin Business School Big Idea Bounce Competition. There they are. Thank this you is so John Brown with Poets and Quants. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot. I did. <laughs>